everybody, welcome back. I'm going to get right into it. And I had to resurface an episode with my incredible friend, Matt Vincent, about obsessing about depth. I've felt constraint recently. Everybody calls me has, and it's time to get deep. It's kind of to get honest, and it's time to focus on our clarity, on ourselves, and on the things that actually move the needle. And we talk about how to do all of that in today's show. And so without further ado, in my Montana chic with pink shoes for the office, let's get into the show. So Mike's also helping get in place, like actually running an affiliate program and doing everything with Not Dead Yet. I couldn't hear you. Oh, um, so Mike's helping get in place like an affiliate program with Not Dead Yet and kind of get all the wheels turning on uh, the recipe everyone uses to do this well. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's great with that one. So um he just chose the fucking hardest business in the world for himself. Well, I mean, I, the way I look at it, I think Mike's good at what he does. And plus, I've seen a crazy result from starting to work with him with Not Dead Yet yeah. Life. Yep. And yeah, if if that's the case, like, I'm either going to fix the things with Not Dead Yet or I'm going to end up shit canning it and focus on Not Dead Yet Life. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But either way, there's two paths that are ahead, which is amazing. That's right. Either way, and what I really believe is Not Dead Yet, the brand starts to support Not Dead Yet life, kind of yep. the way Sean's done Lions Not Sheep. Yep. Yep. You know, that we, yep. we really build a full universe around the Not Dead Yet idea. Yeah. Yeah, because with the with the rebrand, too, the movement is being Not Dead. You know what? I need... Got it. I, we, yeah, we'll get on a call. Uh, if not, okay. I'll come to St. Louis, but, um, Perfect. just through my models right now. And I'm saying this cause this is being recorded, but it can be written down after when sure. you did the rebrand from hate to not dead, it was the perfect time to make the Bible and the movement, which is one of my new models that we've been using. And that's what creates that meaning. And, uh, not dead yet is a lot more endowable than, uh, hate brands. And so now it's about then designing just the language at the top side. So we're consistent and congruent across the board, um, mm-hmm. which isn't a lot. I can do it with uh, you and Mike as well. Um, and because Mike already has a big frame for me and we've talked so much about it, it's, it's relatively quick. But the only things that I would want to do is hit the movement and then the scripture statements, which are two of my IPs, because what that does is even in like the eight week challenge and in the not dead yet life thing, it gives consistent and congruent language for the long game, irregardless mm-hmm. of what offer they're in, which seeds it and keeps them in, which then that way everything starts clean. And so, yeah. Okay. Got it. Got it. Wheels are turning. Cool. It'll be fun to connect. Always. And that's why I love chatting with you, man. Um, Always. Well, like, here's the thing. If I find a stone, I'm turning it over the end. Look, I'm, I'm the same guy, right? Like, and it, and the way I've looked at it is I, I'm very proud of what I've been able to do business wise. And at some point, just like an athlete, I need to look at like, here seems to be where my limitations are. Either I need to prove to myself that these are in fact limitations or let's find a coach to see if they can help me learn some shit. I don't know. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that's where those resources really play in. And I don't understand why people look at developing themselves or developing business any different than I would look at improving my squat. I think this is why people that are athletes have such a better default proclivity for success because their paradigm in the relationship is about weaknesses and improving them, not thinking that they can fix it themselves. And even if you can't find it in your trauma, your natural state is to go look for somebody who has the workout, not who can make you feel better about the workout. Right. Like, and I think that's right, the right, biggest right. part. Yeah. Well, there's always that idea, right. That like the piece I'm missing is this secret stone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like when like I, if I, I could just the... find this hidden button in the back of my website that like, yep. clearly everyone else has put on. Yep. I know. And it was like in the podcast I said earlier, I was like, oh yeah, kind of like the fork made me fat. Right. Like I didn't know I could just put it down. Like you were going to replace it with something else. 
oh man the fork made me fat like that always falls into the lines of um uh it's the egg rolls not the ecstasy yeah yes, it's this line yes. from eastbound and down where <laughs> kenny powers throws up and the guy's talking shit about him behind his back and he's like it was the egg rolls not the ecstasy that made me sick <laughs> Yeah, like clearly you're not blaming this on the right problem. And bro, I actually said one of those. I said a comment similar to that last night in context, and I was like, "Oh, yep, that landed. That landed. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was the egg rolls, not the ecstasy. That's such a good one. That's right. Oh my god, I love yeah, it'd it. Be bro. like, oh, my headache must be from the campfire, not the twenty beers I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. It's probably the campfire. Probably. Yeah, I called Mike this morning. I was like, yeah, man, this is what I'm feeling. And he's like, did you really call me to tell you what you already know? I'm like, yeah, I just needed a reminder. And he's like, yeah, oh, yeah. that when you don't eat enough, you're going to binge eat and feel like shit because you're the leanest you've ever been. I'm like, oh, yeah, I kind of knew that, but I was just fasting. And he's like, oh, and let me guess, training like you weren't fasted. I was like, well, duh, of course, it was me and Stephanos. And he's like, oh, and then you had fucking coffee and water. And he's like, you are me. I'm like, God damn it, stop telling me what I know. Yeah, that's the plan every day. It's just caffeine and anxiety until freak out. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. figure out a different way to manage it. Oh, my God. Yeah. The story of our lives, man. The story that's of the, our lives. You know, that's the stack we're all really successful on. You're right. I'd yeah, go yeah, with yeah. fasting, caffeine, anxiety until like 2 p.m. Except Wes. Wes just uses his trap. Like, right. 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 Except then just switch to like, oh, yeah, lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck, let's Caffeine try to anxiety. Food. Oh, food. Oh, I can eat yeah, actual yeah. Weird, food. Weird, I feel yeah. good again. Yeah, no, but Dude, it's the egg rolls. It's been a minute since we've had a chance to catch up and talk to me. What's going on? How are things? <laughs> yeah, we're recording. <laughs> yeah. Things are the um, greatest they've ever been, which is the weirdest paradox that I could ever, ever, ever stay. It's It's almost like I feel like I'm on a psychedelic, but completely sober with how happy I am. But yet there's zero evidence necessarily for me to be that happy. But it's all very, very beautiful. Like I, the last year, right? Like at the height of the career, events going good, customer journey going good, consulting going good. And then the universe is like, you haven't learned these lessons yet. Let's just take it all away and we'll see how good you really are. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's been a really, really introspective year and you know it's it's kind of hilarious i'm turning 40 soon i'm in like the best shape of my life i'm the happiest i've ever been and my relationship with everything things that meant things to me things that i thought i wanted is kind of all eradicated and the thing that i'm craving more than anything is time with people i love my friends my family but it's also got this like insatiable fire in me right now that just feels so aligned and directed. It's like, oh, I don't care about anything. I'm just going to keep going because it just feels so, so, so good. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting. It's almost um, one of the lessons that, that I'm learning this year is that, you know, the tools and the integration, whether you're an entrepreneur, or you're doing personal development, whatever your business is, right, they never go away. But my relationship with hard and easy has changed drastically. Mm. And this year has been the year of me looking at the things happening and seeing them happen, both in businesses, right? Ones that are scaling great and other ones are getting kicked in the dumpster fire right now because of the state of the market. And seeing these old proclivities and these old defaults of like, oh, it broke. Let's make it really fucking hard again, right? Let's go run an ultra yeah. marathon through it. And now I just have this like obsession with ease. And I'm like, oh, I'm not addicted to the chaos anymore this is incredible. I have an aversion to it. And so it's just been this very like peaceful, but very surreal place. Like it's a, it's a very, very interesting place to be where like my breath work in the morning or a quick leg day, like can just turn the dial back into the accurate barometer and give me clarity where before it felt like it was eons away, right? It was on the other side of all this hard or all this suffrage or all yeah. this pain. And so that's be like that would probably be the best way to describe the last year in the most. Well, I think that's such a such a huge mindset shift, right? Like, and yeah, I mean, hell, man, we've we've known each other a long time, right? And we're talking about what feel like major tweaks in mindset, but the, I mean, the truth is, you're still on the same path, chasing the same big purpose. You know, it's a yeah. matter of listening well enough to adjust the course. Well, yeah, and, and I think I, I think too. You and I talked about this before we hit record too. The other part is that the big, big release was that 
allowing myself the space to adjust because I was so bullish on whoever I was, was the finish line, right? Like, Oh, that's how the business looks. That's how my fitness looks. That's how the relationship works, right? There was no wiggle room because the rigidity was because of my fear. And now sure, it's being willing to be like, Oh yeah. I mean, I have the same ingredients in my kitchen. I have the same items on my menu, but we're doing a facelift on the business. We're doing a facelift on me, right? I've lost a, you know, a relatively large human in the last year, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. body weight wise, and really just being okay, more so with the process than the result, right? And, and that, that line, and you know this better than anybody, that line is such a veiled, thin, line that's like riding a unicycle down the tightrope and it's catchy right well, we're catchy. so programmed to look yeah. at the gap like we're yep. so programmed to live in that space that we're not yet and for many of us that are overachievers who have the gift of delayed gratification it's really easy to be like cool we're delaying gratification i can fucking suffer yep but there's yep. also got to be a point of like yo what are we doing yeah of like yeah. taking a minute to be like, is this really getting us where we want to go? Or are we just setting our hand on fire every day? Bro, that spoken, spoken like a true master who's lived Dude, this more times well, than me. You know, in the, uh, in the, you know, idealistic words of such great bands, like taking back Sunday, there's a <laughs> thing where he says, um, I'm an addict for dramatic and I confuse the two for love. Oh God, that is a bar. Yeah. That is and I'm a like, bar. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chaos. I for a long time recognized that as like that's where we should be going. That's where shit's happening. That's yep. where I've got to problem solve. That's where I gotta do all this. The problem because when you start equating that chaos to progress, the only way to do it is add more chaos. Yep. And for those of us who are lunatics who love running full speed with four plates spinning, but want to murder everyone in our lives at five plates and are bored to tears at three and would rather set everything on fire. Yep. You know, for me, I've started to look at like slowing down as like, Oh shit, this is a skill I have to develop the same way I can develop focus. Like mm -hmm. fuck having the identity that goes with the ADHD or anything else that makes me want to go, go, go and give, you know, give reason and identity to it. And while I can fully justify it because I am doing things that are chasing my purpose, if I don't understand the brakes and how to slow down when necessary, I'm going to miss a lot of the information. Yep. And yeah. so that one's been a, a tough one for me. You know, a long time, I've, you know, I'm not a reader. I'll do an audio book. Yep. I'm like, fuck that. Sit with a book and learn to read. You got to learn how to quiet that voice down so you can focus. That's up to me to figure out how to manage so that it works but yep. being like oh i can't read Ugh, what a limiting thing i'm not trying to compete in it yeah well it's so it's so interesting hearing you share that perspective because like as one of your dear friends like you can see it i can see it right like you're you're craving for space right and to go in and you've always had it but there's like this different level and for me i taught it and i built this world around me because i wanted to hold myself accountable to it but i didn't change the behaviors inside of it right i went into it with the same workout that i had two years ago and like i think you understand this better than most but most people can relate to you like you being a competitive athlete at the highest of levels and, and whatever you apply your brain to there comes a point where you can take the workout you can take the programming, but then there's a space where you have to integrate it like into you to make sure that it's aligned with where you want to go and practice that restraint. And that was something I was petrified of because I'm going through the same thing, right? Where I'm like, oh, I'll have my team read it or I'll just listen to the audio and summarize it, right? But it's like, no, no, no. The yep. stretchy thing is to sit down and fucking write it out like right now because that's the call. Yep. That's the invitation, right? And it's it's no different because I use the analogies all the time, but it's like, if you want to see if somebody's going to win their next fight in the UFC, watch what they do the day after they get out of that ring when they won. Because the guy who goes to recovery in the gym, he's going back. And the guy who went out and celebrated lost the bite. And I think that's the yeah. difference between greatness and, and everybody else. And like, I think I tried to borrow greatness, right? Like I tried to be like, oh, all my friends are great. I'm doing what my friends are doing, right? Like, I've the, like we have the fucking most mutant group of friends in the world. It's it's actually a it's weird, very true, weird place to live with our friend circle. But then I was like, oh, but I'm doing it and they're being it, 
And that was a big, big, big difference, right? Like I was checking the box. I'm like, oh, I'll do that workout, right? I'll do that practice. I'll do that flow. I'll do that movement. But then there was the part where I wasn't applying it to me. I was just doing the workout, right? And it necessarily, that workout wasn't aligned with where I wanted my business to go. It wasn't aligned right. with where you're, I wanted my life to go. You're essentially training. Uh, so I guess the way I've started kind of looking at these things, right? Like, <clears throat> like it would be one thing that I found a workout, any workout, and I'm following it, right? Yep. That is step one yep. of learning how training works, right? Like education around training. Step two and three is trying a couple different workouts. And then you found one that really got the results you wanted. Yep. And then there's another part when now you've realized like what workout has to change to get the different results you want instead of, well, I just keep doing the one that worked before. Yep. And I look at that as like understanding a thing as levels of fluency. Yep. And so like one of those would be, I could go into another country and order food. And like, there's another level of fluency. That's like, I can survive in this environment. Yep. And then I look at real fluency as like, I could defend an argument. Yeah. And so like, I want my level of training understanding to be able to defend an argument. Like this is a wall of tools I have at my disposal to get the top performance out of me. Mm -hmm. But what I need to decide, right. Is what is the performance I'm trying to get out of me? And if yep. I'm not competing in a max total sport anymore, me spending my day in hurt worried about, you know, making my squat better and I don't get building my business and I can't maintain my community and I'm shitty with my wife. I'm, I may be showing progress and consistency and discipline, but it's not aligned with where I'm trying to fucking go. Yep. And so yep. there's going to be that friction. Yep. And, and then I do think yep. that there's something to learning all those training programs and none of it's worth a shit if you don't integrate the lessons. And once you really integrate the lessons, you can pick and choose from any parts of any training program because you're fluent. Yep. Yeah. We were talking about this earlier too. And I, I think this is huge. And this is only for me, but I also had to build a relationship with the diminishing returns, right? Because the deeper you go, typically the longer the gap between the payoff. And that's yeah. where I was losing the game because I was getting frustrated and I would get inconsistent blind, like blindly, like the blinders were going like, Oh, it's fine now. Right. It's fine now. And then the trailing effect of that is like, Oh, that, you know, one tenth of a second that I was going to gain because I've progressed this far. I just added a tenth of a second because I wasn't consistent with the thing that would have gained it. And that, that's right. been another thing for me is like really, really, I'd say the big difference between this year and every other year is that like my priorities are like my practices first, like just like, kind of like yours, right? Like I have my dope built in Montana, but it's like, I have to have to protect those containers because if not, everything else that falls out of it is like game over. And it's, yeah, I, really I know that I'm just not my best if I don't take care of my shit first. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And, and that's been. Yeah. And, and that's been the thing that I've taught for years, but I would also be the one that woke up and like, you'd be in a nine one one or somebody else would, and I'd throw it out the window for my friends in a heartbeat. Right. And I'm like, Oh, but here I am putting their oxygen mask on first. And they're like, Oh, George helped. It's so great. And then I'm like, ah. and then we get off the phone and this happened a ton for me. I would feel empty. And then I would feel over because I wasn't really authentically or no, integrously giving in that bucket. I was just pouring, just pouring, 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 pouring. And yeah, that's, that's been a big, big part of it too, is like that, that level, because I used to make it wrong, right? Like I, I, I now look back at my story and I'm like, God, I'm so glad I figured it all out. Right. Like that. I tried that and I tried that and I tried that. Right. I don't ever want to do web design again. I don't want to be a videographer again, but at least when it comes up now, I know like there's a deep knowing there's not some itch in me of like, Oh, that's my best sport. But I have the experience to be like, Oh, Okay, got it. And that's the big part, I think, is like changing our relationship with it as well, which you've been like a master at. Like, it, it's so, so incredible and beautiful. But for me, it was, it was almost like I didn't believe it could be that simple, right? And I was just more so concerned about what I could say to the world, right? Like, oh, I'm doing this or no, no, this is what it looks like or here's where it was versus like what was important to me, right? And that was a big part of it. Like right now, 
you know, in the internal workings of our company, like we have an entire staff turnaround because we realigned and, and, and I made it wrong in the beginning, right? I, and, and you've seen this, I've seen this, and I see this in companies all the time as well. But like we grow, we change, our identities change, but we also have to be willing to sit with that and make a new plan and adjust the vision and backlog behaviors to that point. And I unfortunately didn't learn this lesson long enough or hard enough the first 27 fucking times. So this one learned <laughs> to where it was like, oh, well, this is what we want. And, but it really wasn't what we wanted. And I wasn't, I wasn't confident enough to go into the team and be like, I'm scared. I want it to look different. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to look like, you know, let's align here. So like we were talking earlier, that chaos just led to more chaos. So I'm like, oh, we'll hire more people to fix that problem. We'll hire, but we weren't, we were just hiring people to treat symptoms and everybody was dying of bleeding chest wounds because they were getting band-aids put on. Right. And, and there's just this level, I don't know, for me now, it's like, it feels so simple, but then I also, my like, God, why did you not see this before? Oh my goodness. It was like directly in front of you. But now it's like just getting well, back mean, into fuck, the man. practice. We and back held ourselves accountable to all the things that we missed because our perspective's too short. Like Jesus Christ. No, I, the joke that I said to some woman in the gym this morning went and see me and she's like, oh my God, you look amazing. She's like, what's the secret? I'm like, do you remember the first fortune, fortune cookie you ever read? And then like 20 years later, you had a moment. You're like, God, if I just listened to that fortune cookie, I would have been here faster. I'm like, I've just had a lot of those fortune cookie moments in the last couple of years. And so I'm saving them all. And I listen to them and I read them every single day. Like that's that's the biggest, biggest difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where do you see kind of the big pivot in your actions and purpose going toward with helping people grow business? Yeah, man. Like, you know, everything's the same, but it's different, right? Like the world has changed a ton. Like five years ago, people, I'd throw customer journey out and relationships out and people like you're psycho. Nobody gives a shit about those. And now my phone rings off the hook. My people won't mm -hmm. talk to me. I don't know what's going on. They're leaving chips. They're jumping in droves. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Right. But for the last couple of years, I've, I've kind of been in this lens of like customer journey, scale your business, boom, boom, boom. But it, it feels a little inauthentic. And, and these are problems that everybody's having in businesses. Like I just keynoted to 58 figure companies and I taught them three mistakes. And they're like, no, no, this changes the trajectory of our business. And, and what ended up happening is that I was the pretty girl in high school for all these e-com companies, right? They'd call me like, hey, scale our business, scale our business, scale our business, scale our business. And I didn't realize that I just felt like a high-end prostitute because like oh, I wow. love doing it. And I love doing the yeah. work, but there's this level of like buy-in when people are aligned or not aligned and it sticks when they're aligned, when they really, really, really get it. And if they're not, it doesn't stick. And mm. I started using the not stickers as evidence against myself of like, God, this isn't working. Like I shouldn't do this anymore. Instead of realizing I was just maybe not working with the right people. And so this whole year has been like this massive, massive shift in like how I see the work that we do, because like we're still the best in the world at customer journey and email marketing and all those different things. But now the level of understanding I have is that like, I can tell if somebody gets it or not, and if they can't get it, I can help them get it a lot easier. And if they mm -hmm. do get it, the results are magic, but it's not like just cause it's a cookie cutter e-com approach or cause it's just customer journey and email. Right. And there was these parts of me that I was afraid to hide. Right. Like, I think you went through this too. Like, it's so interesting to do a lot of work offline, right? Psychedelic work, plant medicine, breath work, embodiment stuff. And there was even a part of me that was like afraid to show it and afraid to yeah, put it yeah. out there. But there's, these are all the tools that like make us successful and, and make us tick. And, you know, for me, entrepreneurs hold a special place in my heart. Like you and I have been in this game for a long time and I didn't have many mentors. I didn't have people that pointed me in the right direction. I got put into another system or another thing. And the more people I paid just yeah. felt more fucking out of alignment for me. And I realized that like people's businesses are like their DNA, their blueprint that they're putting on the world for whatever reason. And, and when you can fully embody that and align it and then make it match and then have it match for your customers, it's game over. Right. And so now I was kind of hiding. I was hiding in the, Oh, I'll go keynote for these people. I'll go consult for these people. They'll call me. I'll make a lot of money. And truth be told, Matt, I think you and I are the same. Like, I want to live in the fucking mud, bro. Like, I just want to be in the weeds. I want to be on the field. I want to be sweaty. I want to be grimy. I want to be bloody. I want to look up and see you bleeding next to me and be like, yeah, we're going to finish this. Like, that is, 
Yeah, I want in the game, whatever the game is. I want in the game. And in the last couple of months, I've just been blessed because I've had a few friends call me and they're like, no, 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 we want to hire you. And I was like, oh, you're friends. I was like, what feels good in your body? They threw a number out. I was like, let's get back to work. And I went to work, but the difference was I like went into the game with them. And I was like, oh, this is where I've been hiding. I was hiding on stage. And the last year well, has I been like... It's- God. And man, I think it can get complicated, right? Because if you're yeah. if you're coaching and doing any of that, like you you really learn to speak in generalities. Yes. And these generalities are are really guideposts and they are the real thing. They do make a lot of sense. But until you can really see it through the lens of your business, like you can't identify the the direct markers. Yeah. And yeah, just being able to step back from it and yeah. choose a direction and be able to look at it differently, you know, always helps. Well, and the paradox too, and I'm glad that you brought this up because that was the paradox I was getting stuck in, right? Because like I do, like you and I speak on stages with all of our friends and the mm-hmm. people that are like ideators and thinkers, right? And that, and that's their job. But I was also not realizing how much reactance I was creating in people because I could talk about the pro the concepts and the principles, but I could also teach them in two minutes to be like implemented into the business. Right. And, and that's the biggest part where I felt like I was out of alignment. It wasn't that I was trying to not share information or not put it out there. I just didn't realize that I was almost becoming a product of the environment that I was speaking in and what I was working in. Oh yeah. 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 And again, like I think it can be unintentional, right? Because for sure. I mean, knowing your audience and having intention behind when you speak, right. Of like, uh, of course, you know, I was thinking about like with coaching, like where I would be uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? I am confident in my ability to reach people. I am confident in my ability to get people to change. I'm confident in my ability to lead and teach people in a one-on-one weekend. Right. Like I know all that. And then I thought about how I'd feel if I saw my brother's name come across the sign up for like a retreat weekend. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Man, there's a level of imposter there that I'm like, fuck. Yes. Man, you've known me forever. And like, you know, all of my shit, like there's no hiding anything from you. Like you have to look at me as this leader that you'd like help from. And also as an idiot fucking five-year-old. Yes. And so like, man, there's a level of familiarity when you cross that line with someone and it gets specific that you're out of generalities. And as a leader, like that's where the real gas comes in. Yep. Yep. And Which also you, goes back you can't to earlier there on stage, right? Like, nope, no. And it goes back to earlier though, but it also comes back to the reps, right? And having the experience and having that toolbox to grab from, right? And then going back to that. Cause the only thing that's like different is like, you know, I used to have to charge a company a hundred grand to, to work for three days to do all of this. But the perspective mm-hmm. that it forced me to do was it forced me to go in and use all my models on myself. And in doing so, I realized that I was putting bloat in there and things in there for the paradox, right? For that thing that we're getting in the way. There was too oh, much generality. To, 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 that's right. Too, like, well, fuck, if they see that this is simple and I'm charging a max, like I need to bloat it. Yeah, too yeah, much principle, right? Feeling. And yeah, they, yeah, yeah. and so then like I started getting into it. I'm like, holy fuck, I, you give me an hour on Zoom, I'll double your business, but we can do it in an hour now, right? And so there was this level of like, I, the the only thing I can equate it to is like when I like was a competitive athlete in like CrossFit, right? And like I hit a benchmark and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, but now that I've mastered that, there's another level. Now I have to get back to the simplicity of the thing that works and then get back at like finding that extra pound or that extra minute. And it's the hero's that, journey. Dude, I know. But like now it's, it's to the journey all the way through and it just never ends. Right. That like you pick a fucking dragon to go slay and you spend a bunch of time sharpening your fucking sword and learning yep. what skills need to be. If that dragon's up mountains, we should probably learn some mountaineering before we leave. Yeah. If that's going to be in cold weather, maybe you learn how to sleep in the fucking, you know, in the snow. Yeah. But you sharpen all your tools before you go slay that dragon. And when you slay that dragon, you don't put your fucking feet up. You go yep. find the next biggest drag, next big dragon to slay that you get to use all the same tools to slay the bigger dragon. Like that's yeah. the fun the, part of the purpose and meaning is and taking I'd, everything I, I've gathered here. Yeah. And I'd say the biggest lesson for me is I was convinced that I needed a different sword for every dragon, except I just needed to keep sharpening the same one. Yeah. And that, that yeah, was, yeah. 
that was probably the lesson. Like for everybody listening, right? Like customer journey is easy. Everybody's got a customer journey, right? You got somebody who pays attention to you, you have a customer journey. You got somebody who follows you on Instagram, you have a customer journey. You sell a program, you have a customer journey, right? They're everywhere. They're completely everywhere. And the trap that I was falling into, I was like, oh, well, I'll only talk to you about it if you want to do it under this lens or do it here. But the truth is, is that whether you have two people or 2,000 people, the same principles apply. But I had almost like just gotten so deep down the rabbit hole of the niche as I was looking for like the six, seven, 240 pound, 4240, who was one workout away from going from D2 to D1. And I was like, give me all of that. Yeah. And I was like, no. I don't want to work with them. I don't like, and I was like, I have all these athletes. And then when I found them, I was like, oh my God. Right. And then also understanding that, you know, five years ago, the term customer journey didn't exist. Right. We were using it. Right. We were calling it email marketing, mm. but now everybody is really, really starting to understand how the market is receiving us on the internet. The filters are up, right. The, the, the scam. Well, even are switching the term from email marketing to customer journey seems less predatory. <laughs> Yeah, well, a thousand percent, right? And when, then when, it, when it's where it's trying to accomplish the same goddamn thing, try to accomplish the same thing. But then the funny joke is there is like, well, they still think customer journey is pretty linear and transactional. It's like, oh, yeah, because Nike's billboard says just do it only if you wear our running shoes or just mm -hmm. do it only if you wear our clothing, right? Like, that's the part that people miss. And so now for me, I'm like, hey, if you get that this is a long game. And like you get that you want a business that leaves a legacy and you will, you also realize that 93% of the people that generate most of your sales have never bought a product from you and you want to build a relationship with them and get more of it, then I can help you at any stage. And the difference was right. I used to be like, hey, you need a seat at the table through here. I'm like, fuck that because I hate the people that sit there anyways. I don't want to have dinner with them. Right. I'm like, no, no, yeah. fuck you. Just because you can afford a seat doesn't mean I want to eat with you. And so no, it's, and it's there's a big joy in realizing you can fire clients. Yeah. And it's just this like it's a, it's like I just have this kid like nothing's changed. Right. Every big company still calls and they have it. But now I'm just like, no, like it's the use of the world. It's the people that listen to this podcast. Like it's the ones who have those small businesses, those medium businesses that have the biggest impact. Right. And when I was in the military, you know, and you study geopolitical wars and war gaming and all of that, like you don't destabilize a country from the outside in, you do it from the inside out. Well, that's the only way we're going to change this market is from the inside yeah. out. And it's the people at the lowest level getting it. And so for me, I was like, fuck it. How do we help more? And like, that's kind of where I am now. Like, I'm like, hey, the menu has like four things on it and there's slots for like 70. I don't give a fuck what you want if you order it, but if enough of you order it, we'll put it out. But this is what we're helping with. Like, this is it. And it's just like this level of excitement and also like really radical and attachment to all of it because I'm like the little rascals back in me. And I'm like, all right, yeah. let's go. Like, let's go ankle yeah, bite. Let's, back, man. You're trying to let's fight. chihuahua at the ankles, right? I'm five, seven on a good day. So you can be tall, but I'm still going to bite your Achilles. Like we're going to change this. And that's the thing I think that excites me the most. But even with you, like, I know you, you resonate so much with this because you're going through it, right? As you're yep. changing what the menu items look like, but also realizing that they're all in alignment and all in congruence. And for me, like the businesses that get it, like they understand that, yes, there's playbooks that exist, but that playbook is just for inspiration. It's your specific application of it that makes yeah. a difference, right? Like I can give different. two different NFL teams the same playbook and one of them is going to win and one of them is going to lose. And the only difference is going to be how they execute it, right? And so for me, I think I just want people to know like the, 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 the game here isn't a game of like going to find a playbook or going to find a different thing that wasn't there. It was finding the one that resonates, but then working with somebody or yourself to make it work for you, right? And like those right. are the pieces that I get more than anything because I also watch so many entrepreneurs fall victim to the bullshit and the trap that we're talking about, right? Like they don't want to be transactional. They don't want to have like sleepless nights. They don't want to feel like a slave to their laptop. But every time they're met with a business problem, sounds like here's a new workout. And then all of a sudden their time's gone and their days are gone. And their weeks are gone and now lifestyle creep pulls in and now they're more fucking stressed managing the life that they swore to God they wanted than they are right. living it. Right. And they don't have a relationship with time. And so I, I think I think now I'm just really, really clear, and really, really aligned on like the power of entrepreneurship, like what it does for us, what it allows us to do. But also like the things that you have to have in you to want it to work. Right. Like you really got to care. You got to actually give a shit. You have There's, to understand. I, I haven't seen any evidence that it works without that. 
No. They're like, I don't give a fuck what you're bringing to the table, but if it's, if you're not consistent and you're not disciplined and have intention in the actions you're taking, it's never going to work. Never, never. And like, I just gave this keynote and someone's like, well, what happens if, you know, like, well, they just don't get it. I'm like, well, what happens if my six-year-old doesn't get it? Do I fucking turn them in and return them for a new one? And I was like, because the people that don't get it are also the ones that are paying your bills and allowing you to be in this keynote in Hawaii right now. The same ones, right? And like, that's the game. And I'm like, I think people are finally starting to get it. Like they realize that there is a direct representation because three years ago, four years ago, Matt, I mean, six years ago when we started running Facebook ads, you could put a dollar into every single person in the US 18 to 65 and you'd convert, right? And now good yep. luck on any way, yeah, shape luck. or form. We're in a different world, man. I think. And, then, and the number one thing we're seeing, and you've seen this and everybody else is seeing this, is that anybody who has an existing community that has relationships built on something other than products that knows how to communicate with people, have them feel safe, seen and heard are the ones that are surviving and all, not only surviving, but thriving through this. And then having the people on your boat and it's like, Hey, I know we were going to the Bahamas, but I think it's better if we go to Hawaii or you guys in for the ride. And they're like, actually, yeah, will you serve us this? Will you give us this? Right? Like people are starting to see, but now that I'm like, Hey, listen, if you can see that, you're ahead of 99% of the game. So go listen to my podcast and fill in the rest, right? And I think that's what's exciting me. And then the other part, Matt, and I think you'll appreciate this, the paradox that it led me to was I was getting unconfident in what I believed and what I knew. And so I was making excuses for people, right? They'd be like, oh, I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine. And now I'm like, no, fuck no. Like you deserve a two by four to the shins if you think that way. Like I'm not getting off this anymore because you told me to help you avoid the car accident and you're fucking right. pressing the gas pedal and you're leaning into the guardrail. Like, I can't do it anymore. And like, this is one of the reasons I love you so much and why every motherfucker in your coaching program are savages, which I love, is that they all understand and fully believe at the end, like the embodiment of you, which is like, I'm not dead yet. There are no excuses, but I am the only one who can make these decisions and who can make this different. And I think that that's that secret, like, and, and for everybody who listens to this podcast that isn't in Matt's, get your fucking ass in there because it's about osmosis, right? It's about being around the people who get it, that don't placate you and don't enable you, but just their presence holds you accountable to your greatness. And then they're there to catch you if you struggle like that, that at the core of it is deeper than anything for me. And when you can take that and being in your coaching program, but then you can apply those same principles to your customers or to your team. That's when the game is really won. And that's the magic that we do. But like, I got to speak to it because it's so powerful. Man, it, it's been such a cool thing to see people get it right. And like, yeah. my big concern is, is that you just have to have the real honesty with yourself and understand that no one's going to fucking build the dream life for you, for you. Like no one gives a shit. No, one. you're either going to be used to build someone else's or get on top of your own shit, yeah. but having the accountability to, you know, find those people that you're around, like having the awareness too to say, Holy shit. If I want greatness out of myself, I have to surround myself with other people who demand greatness of them, not in a comparison way not in a competitive way, but just proof of concept that this can be done and that progress can always be made. Yep. And until you surround yourself with that, I mean, trying to get people to open their eyes to that. I'm like, no matter what household you grew up in or what community or what the vibe was in your house, it has an imprint on you of whether you went toward it or didn't. And I mean, there's a reason why you see a household that has kids that grew up around two parents that were entrepreneurs. Yeah. Very fucking rarely do they make it into nine to five careers. Yes. Cause they get that side of hustle. Whereas myself, right. And my mom's been a teacher for 40 years and my dad was 35 years working for a place. One place. And so what I grew up around was stability in this one thing. And so it took a long time to rewire that and be able to look at what the life I want as acceptable and not dangerous per se, but just being aware that I was never exposed to it. So I don't have any familiar terminology or way to feel about it. Mm -hmm. And so in that same instance, like that's what you have to, if you can realize that I was shaped by this, that I didn't pick simply from being around it. So now if I say I'd like to be like this, which is an entrepreneur, which is disciplined, which is consistent, which is with intention and, and action 
And if I surround myself with people doing the same, it won't help but affect me. It has to. Yep. But you have to find those people. You have to find the thing that you want to push you and adapt you. Yep. It doesn't just show up standing next to it. And no matter how you slice it, it's not going to reach through your laptop and do it for you either. Right. No, man, you can have a gym membership and go to the gym every day. But unless your ass gets on the fucking treadmill and lifts the weight, nothing matters. And that's and at some point, I, if you want to get stronger, put another fucking plate on the bar. And I think that that was the, the, the hardest part for me, right, was having the patience and trust that the things that I was doing consistently were mm-hmm. going to pay off. But that still led back to, you know, my relationship with self, right? Like, and this is what I love about athletes. We were talking about this before the show. It's like, that's the, that's the greatest benefit is when you can understand, like for me, I look at entrepreneurs, like we are like literally the best athletes in the world. If we choose to be, it's all about performance and self-care because the more you do it, the more intentional and integrous you can be with your time and the bigger, the harder you you can can work, the longer hours you can put in, like for sure and everything. And so it really, really just boils down to the fact that it also starts with for everybody listening to this. And this one was for me is that the quality of question of what you're looking for is going to dictate the answer, right? Because even at the bat, if you're looking for a play instead of a playbook, you're already going to lose. If you're looking for an answer instead of support and finding your own, you're going to lose. And that's the part that really, really, I'd say to summarize this year is that what I ended up realizing is that I wasn't running everybody else's. I mean, I wasn't running my business. I was running the version of what I thought everybody else wanted my business to look like. What everybody else wanted my my offers to look like my podcast to look like and it was subtle it wasn't it wasn't like oh my goodness like look it's just these subtle pulls that felt out of alignment and then rather than me bringing them back into alignment i went and looked elsewhere for answers and then when i started Mm. to find it and bring it back in i'm like oh no 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 because the name of this game is 80 percent of it is context and the content is my specific application and that's the point that you win the game, but that's what you have to be looking for as well, because no matter what, we're all going to squat lift differently. We're all going to deadlift differently, but it's a matter of like, are you achieving your goal? Are you getting closer to it? Irregardless of what the movement looks like, not that you're doing deadlifts mat way or doing morning routines, Matt's way, or you go build the dope and go build the dope all you want, yep. but you don't need to have Matt's dope or my dope to have the result. No, you need yours. You need your dope. No, that, you need to figure out what's your most inspiring place. What's your fucking thing that sets your soul? That's on a fire. good clip. We're just and, gonna pull out that you need your dope, and that's where it's gonna yeah, start. Yeah, that's it, right? It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Perfect for the show. So, man, as entrepreneurs are, are, I mean, we're only gonna see an increase in people take a shot at entrepreneurship over the next ten years. It's gonna yes. fucking go bonkers. Yep. So, if someone has gotten the ground going, right? Like they've got a product out. Let's use apparel, let's use a thing. Yep. And they've gotten a little bit of traction, right? They're starting to see orders and starting to see $2,500, $3,000 a month. Yep. Like, where do you think's their next biggest focus? Oh my God, this is such a good question. I am so fucking happy you asked this question. Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Because man, that guy getting from 2,500 to five grand. Yep. Is more of a fucking life changer. Dude, that's a double your business. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like yes. in that five grand too, when you're starting as an entrepreneur, like entrepreneur, like, holy fuck, we have something. Yep. And so I'm going to, this is like a, a month's worth of coaching with a one-on-one client that I can summarize in like a minute. And here's the mistake. The mistake is when it starts working, we want more of it. But what we start to do is get in the way of the behaviors that created it in the first place. And then we can't keep up. And so if you're listening to this and you're at 2,500 a month, five grand a month, 10 grand a month, this will apply to you upwards of 50 to hundred grand a month before I changed my answer. And when you get to a point where you're like, oh my goodness, I'm having $2,500 a month and I want more of it. That's because for the first time you have space and time that was created by the business. But that space and time is a trap. Because the answer is, if well, you, you start do, other businesses, <laughs> yes, if you do one thing in that moment, you should ask yourself one question. What are the three to five behaviors that I did every day that generated this revenue? And when you find them with the new time and the new space, you eliminate 
anything that got in the way of those and create a process around the things that you can to do them more efficiently. But then here's the trap. To scale is you do more of those things deeper. You don't add other things to the plate. And so like, for example, and I've had this conversation with many of our friends as of late, Matt, and it's myself included. It's like, if you go back to the early days of me consulting, even when I was making the most amount of money, everything was the same. It was meet people, get on a actual call on Zoom for an hour and not sell anything, but find the holes, add value, improve upon the silence. And then naturally, three out of the 10 of them would call me back and eventually want to work together. And then over time, I'm like, oh, yeah, well, maybe I don't want to be on those calls anymore. So I'd automate out of them or get pieces yeah, off of, of course, them. Right. And so when I describe success, I describe it as a Christmas tree. Okay. The root, like the trunk of your tree is that to the first point of your business or life where you're like, oh my God, I can breathe even if it's for only a minute, right? Until you get that, the core of that tree is basically who you are, who you help, and how you're helping them. And in the very beginning, we don't have a relationship with failure because every time it doesn't work, we don't have the space to overanalyze it and ruminate on it. We make an adjustment and we go again till it works and we go again till it works. And then that's why we win so early on. The people who make it past that first finish line, if they get the game, can make it forever because that first one's the hardest one. To go from like a stay-at-home mom to launching apparel or a dad who was 20 years in and now has this bite, right? Like that was the hardest fucking part of the game. Like you've already separated yourself into like the top 1% of all people that are never right. going to leave. <laughs> right. And we lose when we don't take a look at the workout and what – routines we did, what habits we did that got us there. And if you need help, go read Clockwork by Mike Michalowicz. But what you'll find is that if you're getting to that $2,500 to $3,000 point, there's a lot of things that are working, but there's also a lot of noise that's getting in the way of it working more. And so when you do that audit, you find the behaviors and you might realize, oh yeah, it's when we're consistent on Instagram. It's when we always send these DMs and then it's when we do this. And if those are the things that you do, then your path to going from 2,500 to five grand would be to go deeper in those behaviors and increase your ability to do it while hiring out, outsourcing, or protecting the things that would get in the way of it. But the trap is we get it. And so then we try to automate and feed the system. And in doing so, we create so much complexity and so much noise that by the time we catch it, the behaviors that were making the $2,500 a month in the first place are now dwindling down. So we have to throw more fuel on the distractions to try to make up for it, but it never does. And eventually it always comes back to that same core. And so if you can get this early, like you have to understand that success is simple and boring as fuck because it's predictable because anybody from the outside to your 2,500, five grand, 10 grand, right? I go into companies doing a hundred million a month. It's the same thing. There are three things in each department that generate 80% of that revenue. It's the fact that we like to think that there isn't because we want it to be exciting and we want it to be fun. No, no, no. You have to earn the fun by doing those things first, right? And so the yeah. faster you can find those needle movers for you and you can protect them, the faster you can double, you can triple and you'll go down. And I know you've gone through this as well. You and I have been coaching people for years. No matter which mm -hmm. way we slice it, when you get back down to it, it's accountability. At the end of the day, it's just accountability. And then no matter what, we'll go through these phases. And then we right, end up right back there. And when we start holding people accountable again, they tell their friends and then their friends join and they hold themselves accountable. And like, that's where it comes in. And so people fall into this trap, e-commerce businesses, coaching businesses everywhere, because everybody's convinced in more. But what they don't realize is that if they add more to what's there, it's most likely going to leak out the bottom of the bucket. You have to protect it. You have to build systems and habits around it. And then you use the space that's left to try other creative ideas to fill in the bucket that worked already. And so the mistake is they're like, hey, here's this recipe that worked. Okay, let me add 10 more. No, keep that recipe, but then go talk about it 10 different ways so more people can come experience that recipe. And that is the only path that will take you up there. And then, of course, at different levels, then you get into training team and outcomes and things like that. But it's always going to be around those core functions every single time. I mean, the whole Christmas tree metaphor is one of those things that you've shared that I 
of course recognize and see and every entrepreneur is like as things are going and now you're an entrepreneur which means like i could just start businesses yep. this is great yep and you just end up spread too fucking thin and not doing anything and most people never trim back in down to the fucking core of the tree and so to finish the analogy for 30 for seconds i didn't i didn't finish matt i didn't finish and they're gonna bo be bothered and explain so the root is what gets you there but what ends up happening is when you get that space you're like oh i want more so you go wide and when you go wide, it's the first base of the Christmas tree. And you'll go wide and it will give you some temporary relief. It will give you some dopamine because it will work occasionally. But then it will hit a point where it stops working and everyone will convince you you have to go up. That's how you scale, right? And so they try to make this rectangle Christmas tree. They miss the point where at that first level, you trim back to the trunk. You keep what worked. You let go of what didn't. You get back to the core principles. And when you go out the next time, you never go as wide because of lessons learned. And that's really what it is, but it's not a mastery of width. It's a mastery of depth because that core of your tree is always going to be the heartbeat of your business. Like no matter which way, you know, on it slices it. When I say on it, everybody only mentions one of two products. When I yeah, say vital, great. they only mention one of two products, right? When I say X amount, it's only one of two and it's the ones that know it and protect it that win. But then when you ask about other companies, people, oh, they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this. And it's all over the board. They're not the ones that are scaling because everybody's having a different experience and they're confused. And so it's protecting those things at the deepest, sure. deepest part that even gives you the foundation required to even be able to scale a company up to the level that most people want to. Right. Yeah. You know fuck man it's it's always this learning process right like i mean you've known me long enough and i kind of i feel like as far as a executor and a worker and diligent and consistent i'll give myself an a plus as Facts. a guy who's a business owner i got c's across the fucking board um and but that's the awareness of, of that the realization yes but the awareness, the awareness of that of is the like, secret i gotta find someone who can help yes but not you help know, by replacing me and not help by boom, but like, hey, what's the workout that I haven't seen that I have yep. to learn, right? And and yep. that's, the, that's the difference. Because like the other part of that Christmas tree too is that, and, 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 and a lot of entrepreneurs fall into this, like I'm not a finisher, right? I'm an 80 percenter. I know this all day, right? As much as I love to live in the weeds when I'm teaching, when I'm coaching, like I envision, like I'm what, why, and a little bit of how, but like I am the king of getting ideas to 80%, right? Mm -hmm. And I have to have a finisher. My CEO is the finisher. She's the 20% that's on there all day. But we also have to remember that in entrepreneurship, whether it's a physical products brand, a, a content brand, or whatever, a coaching brand, when we add that distraction, what we're also saying is I'm running a marathon and now I'm going to go start three marathons at the same exact time and expect to finish one of them in first place. Right. And yeah. it's like, you have to earn the or right. At least this shouldn't suffer. Yeah. You have to earn the right to run that other race by crossing the finish line. Right. And when I find people like, Oh, I want to do this. I want to double this. And they're looking for more. They're not looking for more to like embody that and like become the champion They're looking for more distraction to confuse the process. And you have to be willing mm. to see something through the finish line. Because it's truly the only way to know. Like when we get called all the time, right? Like I'll go in like, well, I tried this and I tried this. I'm like, how long? They're like two weeks. I'm like, how do you were running the other thing for two years? How do we know? Right. And then they're yeah, like, oh, yeah, what do we do now? Like no we have to test again. Oh my God. And there's like a longer process, right? And so a lot of people also don't realize the collateral damage that happens when they get all these ideas and they distract away from the core is that they're just adding complexity and confusion because at the end of the day, your business is simple. It doesn't matter what your business is. If you have a solution for somebody's problem, you have to find where they are, who they are, get their attention, make them feel safe, and then show them that you have a solution. But if you're selling a product, it's build a relationship until they buy the product and holding them accountable to use the product. Other than that, the business isn't that, it isn't that complex. It doesn't matter if it's Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or email. It's I need to find people that are in pain. I need to make them feel safe, seen, and know that I have a solution and then collect their money and hold them accountable to it. It doesn't right. matter if you're on one platform or 17 platforms. It matters that wherever you are, you're doing that job. And the distraction, the complexity gets in the way of it. And no matter which way you slice it, it's always going to come back. You're always going to have one social platform that works better than the rest of them. You're going to have one piece of content that every time you share that topic, 
it goes bananas over the rest of them. You're going to have hero SKUs that outsell the other SKUs. Like when people are telling you what the fuck they want, give them more of it and stop convincing yourself that they're lying to you. What if you have more of a mentality of, uh, I'm going to do what I want anyway. That's, that's how the artist works. Well, if that, that is how the artist works and that is incredible. Yeah, you just and can't so have both. The self-awareness around it though. Like, I want a great business. <laughs> yeah. The self-awareness around it though, is that I can't say I want it the artist's way and I want to run a $10 million predictable scalable nope. business because that no, is a paradox that, that doesn't exist. But if you're like me and you are an artist then you have a team and structures to protect you so that you get to be out in your fairyland. And then the fairyland never makes it into the business because they're like, oh, no, no, that's just Georgian fairyland. Oh, we need to finish this 20%. Let's finish this 20%, right? And and it's yeah. about having the awareness of that as well, which is what you're so massive about, right? And knowing like, oh, yeah, integrate, execute, boom, 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 boom. But when it comes to business, I'm a C. I'm the same way. When it comes to your vision, I'm an A+. Plus. When it comes to mine, I'm an F. I don't like to think about my vision. I like to build it brick by brick. And so what I coach is so interesting because I, do, I cannot apply it to me. Like I want to look at the ground every day and pick up a brick because I can't tell you what I want my house to look like in five years, right? Sure. And like it, it's really, yeah, it really interesting. resonate with that a lot. It's really, really interesting when you start to learn yourself and understand yourself because then it's like, Ash is like, I want this. And you're like, give it to me. Whatever you want, I'll say yes to. Because if you give it to me, I will execute against it like a fucking savage if I'm aligned with right. it. But I can't paint the picture. And so I stopped trying to paint the picture because it just kept getting fucking frustrated. And I'm like, no, no, I'd rather just pick up a brick and put it in place, maybe mortar one in and be like, ah, you know what? I want a pink brick there. Let's pull that one out and put a pink one. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Right. And it's like maybe at no, the end of the building the airplane while you're flying it type of thing, right? And They're maybe like, at the know, maybe at the end look. of the day, like I wasted two hundred bricks that I'll turn into a fireplace, but at least the house looked exactly how I wanted it to look. And I can say that I built it and I'm proud of it. And you might not like the pink brick in the middle, but that's my fucking favorite one. And I'm glad yeah. that if I pulled it out and put it in. If you're the largest house you can for the cheapest amount of money, there's other goals. Yes. Understand yeah. that those two intentions are different and bring different results. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I, I think too, man, to answer that question for one final piece is that what, what you have to remember is that no matter which way you slice it, it's always going to be the chop wood carry water, right? Like if you want to lose weight, it's always going to be eat less than, I mean, move more, eat less, eat less. sleep better. And then take care of yourself, right? Like the secret to weight loss is sleep and your nervous system over everything else. And the other things are designed to feed it properly. Yeah. But you can't outwork that any day. And when it comes to business, like when you have people that you've helped and you've solved their problem, you have to do more of that every day and then find more people with problems every day. Yep. And that's your chop wood and carry water. And then you eliminate anything that gets in the way of it. Yep. Just be here to solve problems that's that's really you know, man, really what it is well that's that's how i've really looked at like what the challenge of entrepreneurship is it's not managing t-shirts or coming up with designs or any of this it's problem solving it's yeah. like oh shit we don't have a thing to drop in october what do we want to do we need to solve that problem you know we aren't converting well on this what do we do that's a problem to solve like oh shit this came in and it looks like trash we're not selling it yeah problem to solve um, et and cetera, also, et cetera, et cetera. I, I want to add a, a note for you too, though. It also, it's also knowing your product, right? Because like, let's take apparel, for example, there's only one or two buckets you can sell it in. You can sell it in function mm -hmm. or family. That's it. You're either selling apparel because it functions better than everything else. And your angle is its function, or you're selling your apparel as a totem or a meaning of something greater, which okay. stands for family. And it's just a tool. But when I cut yeah. your business down, I'm like, oh, what? You can't find a model for an e-com business on the internet? There's thousands of them. Yeah. Are you selling it for function? You're selling it for family. And you're like, family. I'm like, great. You have 10 times as much work to do, but it's the most rewarding work in the world. But yeah. then at the end of the day, it's not about selling apparel. It's about finding people, getting them to be a part of your movement, realize that they think and believe the same things that you do. And then once they have that, realize that they want to be on your team and then they wear your apparel to represent with pride what they're a part of because it holds them accountable as a totem and that continues to get them to buy it as long as they get results. But in the lens of business, it's still the same inputs and outputs. And when you simplify it down, 
it really, really just gets down to the fact that you can open the best fucking restaurant in the world, but you wouldn't leave the success of that restaurant predicated to your staff holding signs in Times Square saying, please come try our food. That's not how you're going to open a Michelin star restaurant. You're going to tell everybody. You're going to make them a part of the process. You're going to talk about it, embody it, live it, own it every single day. So where walking in the restaurant was the only option because they needed to taste what was on the menu. Right. But yes, just for the record, that isn't because you did an Instagram reel, it's going to work. Or because you did a fucking dope photo shoot and you have veins in your legs, it doesn't work. It doesn't matter if they can see you in your apparel and aspire to be like it. It only matters if they can see themselves in the apparel and what they would look like as a part of it. Yeah. Being able to find family, find community, find connection. It's what we've desperately all entered in this weird stage where, you know, it's interesting, right? Because I've see, it, we're seeing such a pivot again to what I looked at, like the late sixties and seventies of being to where this counterculture develops and people start forming their own community groups yep. because we don't have a trust for this. We don't have a trust for, for yep. daddy government anymore. Yep. Yeah. Um, and the same, the same thing in business as marketing though. Everyone's like, God, what are you talking about? The same principles that I've been learning about since the 1800s that have always stood the test of time, right? Mm -hmm. Like even to your point, it's like, yeah, everybody got really, really complacent and lazy with e-com from like 2010 to 2017. Like it was pretty much, if you wanted to launch a collagen, go, if you wanted to launch a supplement, go, if you wanted to drop ship on Amazon, go, if you run to run a Facebook ad, go. Man. It's the wild west, right? Because there was this new thing that wasn't really new that found another way to get attention and capitalize on dopamine. But now everybody's sitting there holding their dicks in their hand. Excuse my yes. language. But for everybody understanding, you have 2 million followers and 17 comments. And yet you see another brand with 14,000 followers that get 700 comments and do $2 million a month just selling courses or products with no paid media. The principles right. will always stand the test of time. And the community, the customers, the relationships with them are always and have always been the secret. And what most people don't realize is the distractions that they're taught in the playbooks of business get in the way of those things working, which cuts the head off the business before it ever starts, right? So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I have a community, go deeper. If you have people realize you have something that most people don't have now, Matt, my phone rings more now from seven and eight figure companies that are losing themselves because they have zero community and they realize that people don't give a shit about the product anymore. Nope. You can't save that. Like when you nail a hole in a fence and you pull the nail out, the hole's still there. And when you do enough damage, people remember and you can't fix it. And so even people listening to this that are in your community, I personally know are set up better than 99% of the people in the market. Because people in the market are looking for a new strategy and tactic mm -hmm. to transact more, to get out of the business more, and to get out of the core of what works. Where if you listen to this and realize that there's a good chance that if even 100 of you reached out to me for a coaching call, in the first 30 minutes, I'd have you realize you already had what you needed. You just didn't realize the recipe on your menu was so good. And you just had to get back to serving it to people. And that's what scale is. Like scaling a business comes from subtraction, not addition. It cuts from cutting all the noise away from the things that worked in the first place and then protecting those and doing more of those without allowing the distractions to come in. Yeah, I, I look at that as like, uh, you know, as often as we, you know, put heavy idea on this, like never quit mentality is like, fuck that. You should quit the things that aren't working. Yes, like have always. Some goddamn awareness about the things that no longer are serving the direction you're going because they worked six months ago does not mean you still need to be loyal. Yeah. Cut it the fuck out. Exactly. As, as we wrap percent. up, another question for you, man. I get hit, I don't know, 10 fucking times a day, right? Of someone who's going to help me do all the things that you, that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're in a crowded space too. I am. So like as, as an entrepreneur, how do you, how do you decipher that bullshit? Yeah, no, for dude, it's such a good question. I personally get about 16 to 17 a day right now, right? I get pitched. Well, people that are going to improve your customer oh, journey and help. Oh, yeah, <laughs> improve my customer journey. But my favorite one is like my content, right? I get content pitched. We can make your videos better. Oh, we can God, make them same. cheaper. And so here's my question for all of them when I respond to those because they'll send me copies of my videos. And I'm like, awesome. What was my intention in that video? And they're like, I don't know. 
I'm like, that's the difference. Perfect. You'll never be able to know because that's the secret. So for everybody listening to this, there are plenty of incredible people out there. But if somebody is sliding into you aggressively, I already know your answer is not in there. And at best, it's an invitation for a current state analysis for you to do on your business. Because if it excited you, you have an awareness, but there is no easy solution. And so first bat, there is very few people, and I mean, I could name them, that could come in and do a wall-to-wall everything that you need, but also understand that when people are coming in to run your business for you and do it for you, they're eliminating the thing that made it work in the first place, which was you. You. And that's the part that everybody has to get into. It's like, if you're even thinking about the fact, like, I need George or I need Matt, that tells me that you're going to throw something out in your business that was your unique DNA that worked in the first place. And then there's going to be collateral pain that comes. You know, and I don't know if it's social media's fault or who fucking cares why it is the way it is. But I think a lot of people look at this idea that entrepreneurship is this rocket ship to cash and then scale and you are no longer involved. And that happens to like 0.01% of any of these assholes. And even then, Everyone I've ever known that's gotten that opportunity has still been 15 years into fucking dying for it. Yep. 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 A thousand percent. And like, here's the thing. I said this on stage. I think everybody's convinced like you get cold pitched marketing because everybody is convinced they have a marketing problem. Yep. Very few people have an actual marketing problem. Like 0.0001%. The rest are relationship problems. Every single time, right? And it's like you even think about the nature as to why it'd be open to somebody, oh, coming to do all your marketing. Because what you're convincing yourself is that they can come in and raise your children better than you can, but you're just not willing to look at how you're not raising your children correctly, right? Like that's at the big, big, big core of it. And so there's nothing wrong. There's plenty of people that can come out and put systems in place and put processes in the place. But what you have to ask yourself is what are they putting them around? And am I putting them around the things that are going to work? Am I putting them around the pain points that I didn't want to look at anymore? And now I think by automating and putting somebody in place that they're going to come give me a vision and give me a playbook and want my team to win more than their own team. You've lost your fucking marbles. Nobody is going to do that for you. No one's ever going to do that. Building their team and they are being a leech and they are siphoning off and borrowing. You are never allowed to let someone else love to care about your dream more than you. It's fucking never work. Never, never. And then here's the other part too. The fact that most people, and here's the other one, if you ever get pitched a one size fits all, or it's just this prescription, it's already fucked. Game over. Like game over. And that's the hardest part because you'll realize me and my counterparts aren't out selling systems because systems work to a degree, but it's the personalization of it that makes it stick around forever. And it's like, hey, if you got diagnosed with cancer and I gave you the choice between two doctors, one who would put you through the protocol that everybody went through to give you a chance or one who would personalize it for you to guarantee you had a chance, you're taking the personalized oncologist every fucking time. Every time. Every time. And so here's the tilt, the best coaches in the world, the best consultants, the best marketers in the world, they will have one thing in their language differently. If I reached out to you, I would speak about what you had working, your possibility and what was possible for you. Most everybody else is I, 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 I have this system. I have this leads. I've generated this. I can do this for you. Notice the fact that none of it is for you, but yet they are getting feedback and doing it much because we engage with it and we support it because we're advocating our responsibility and power. It will not work. I promise you. And if you put half of those people through their fucking paces and got on a call with them, be like, great, tell me. And then be like, yeah, but what about my voice? And I want this to, and you'll hear, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Our system works we do this and we've proved this and we've done this. And then Matt and I will tell you, cause we've both learned this lessons, myself included, which is why I'm so bullish on it now is that what you end up is 90 days, 120 days in where you paid somebody a retainer and all you had were damaged relationships where you have to throw the entire fucking book out, recover yep. from what was there, 
rebuild yourself and your team and trust and then going on with that wound in the world, realizing that you still only had your answer. And so what you want to look for is you want to look for recipes that can be modified for you, your flavor, your people and your audience, but not done in a completely different way. Right. Right. Dude. I love you, man. I love you, bro. Like all, like, here's what's so crazy about this. I'm so used to like, even when we catch up sometimes or like, I'm with you, we're always happy, but I have these like moments of like, oh, this is going on and this is going on. I just have like so much happiness in my body. I'm just like, God, this is weird. Like, did I even say anything of value? Like, it's kind of interesting oh, to not great. have all the, all the pieces, but like, even I can only say this, I don't care that we're recording. I'm saying this as a friend, like yeah, yeah. even my nervous system every time. I have one of these new behaviors of like, oh yeah, it's easy and you can talk about it and it's clear and you can feel happy about it. I'm like, oh my God, it's happening again. Oh, there it is again. And it's so interesting in the reflection, dude. It's so, and by the way, Bon Bon, for everybody who doesn't know Matt's Bon, and if you don't know Bon, you should. Bonnie, thank you publicly for my beautiful mala beads in pink that I am wearing and I will wear when I facilitate because this made my nerdy little heart happy. So thank you. Yeah, man. It's been, uh, it's been cool. It's been cool having kind of the mala tool, right. As just something as a physical pattern interrupt of a gratitude moment, something that I can grab a hold of and like, I don't give a fuck what mood you're in. Yeah. Be as kooky or unkooky as you want to be. Yep. Make it around all those beads saying thankful for something in your life. Yep. And still be in a shit mood. Yep. It's impossible. It's impossible. It just man. doesn't work. And so no, like, and man, that's easy enough. Cool. And, and for everybody listening, like here, here's the thing that I'll, I'll say you, I'll, I'll tell you like the difference between an Olympic gold medalist who has a coach and entrepreneurs is the Olympic gold medalists want a coach to be better, but everybody else thinks they need a coach to be better. Right. And none of you need anything, but the fact that you're open you're... to this and hearing this puts you in the best place. And so it's just about protecting that because what I find Matt, most people who are even at like, and there's probably a lot of people at that like 1000 to $5,000 a range in revenue. The only thing that really gets in the way is you look at the gap ahead of you and you compare it to everybody else's. And it just gets in the way of the things that you were already doing that were working. And so if you can protect your practices, right? Like I say, you're a product of your practices, right? And you do those things and you keep doing those things that were working. When you find people like Matt or myself or anybody else that's heart centered, they will help you make adjustments to your programming to get more of what you want, not more of what they want. But it really genuinely starts by understanding that you're in the right place and you have everything that you need. It's just about making adjustments to the menu until it's feeding everybody. And that's what you should be looking for. Yeah. On that note. I appreciate it. Anywhere everybody can find you? Yeah, we should probably do that. You've been on the pod. We'll have to do another one. I want to do it in person, though, so we'll either get you to Montana I'd love or that. we, we, will, uh, I okay. will come back out to the dope headquarters because I have Why don't no we problem. Just, I'll, uh, I'll hit you up and talk about the event that we're doing in Montana in February. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, we can stack that. So we're going to so do an event in Montana in February. It'll be a retreat uh, in Amazing. Helena. Hel oh, perfect. Uh, the 9th through the 11th and kind of our plan is to like lean into discomfort and what we get from choosing it and in montana so good in the February, best state not? the best state in this country to lean into discomfort and be reminded of the power of nature this is why i live here yeah we've got a plan uh, to cut a hole in a lake yep oh yeah uh, oh in february boy trailer down to the lake yeah in helena we out here now yeah. we out no, here no. we out here now so yeah so for everybody listening uh, Matt's been on my show. Uh, I think uh, my podcast probably one of my crowning achievements as an entrepreneur. At least for me, it's going up in the top three of things I've ever accomplished. But it's called The Mind of George Show, uh, mindofgeorge.com. Um, the podcast's up there. Everything's up there. But for me personally, more than anything, um, Matt will tell you this all day. I hate open loops and I hate leaving people worse off than when I found them. So if I opened a loop for you today, if you have a question, if you need a resource, if you want to run anything by me, just DM me on Instagram. I will personally respond. I will answer the video. I will answer your questions. I will send you any resource you have. I just want to be able to support. And my Instagram is it's George Bryant. The it's is included because some 78 year old realtor in Michigan won't give me the fucking Instagram, but he gave me the website. So it took me six years to get the website, but old boy is bullish on the gram. So I'm going to let him keep his gram. So he has that one. So the it's is included. 
um, I T S G E L R G E B R Y A N T. And, uh, and just for everybody listening, like, thank you. Um, I mean that, but if I open any loops, if you have any questions, please reach out. I would be honored to support. No, as always, thank you for everything, man. You've helped me in more ways than, you know, and always appreciate the friendship, brother. Uh, well, I do know and vice versa, hence why we're soul brothers for life, man. It's, it's an honor. It's, it's, it's with great gratitude that in like all places that I could choose to spend my day today, I get to spend it with you. And this is like the best hour and 15 minutes of my fucking life right now. So thank, thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. It's been hell of good catching up. Yeah, man. I love you, you man. And I will see love you soon. You. Appreciate you, bud. Let me, uh, let me hit the stop button and let this thing.